Hello everyone, hope everyone is doing well. Today we are going to learn about hypothesis testing using p-values. Now whenever you're given a question with a, that is asking you to test a certain hypothesis, the first thing to look into it is what is it asking? Is it asking for finding whether the number, the population, or do we ex uh, suspect that the population mean has changed or has it increased or decreased in value? So if we are faced with a question that says change, like the question has change in it, then we are going to assume and then or we will know that we have to do a two-tailed test. On the other hand, if the question asks find whether the population mean has either increased or decreased, then we are going to do what we would call a one-tail test. So now from one-tail test, we have to find out, okay, because it may say increase or decrease, if it says increase, then it will be a right-tail test, and if it says decrease, then we are dealing with the left-tail test. So if it says increase, Or if it says decrease, then we will have two different types of tests. So it's either going to be a right tail test if it's an increase or a left tail test if it's a decrease. So then once we have our test, now we can write our hypothesis. So let's start with our right tail test. If we are dealing with a right tail test, my H naught would be the population mean is either less than or equal to some number. And my alternate would be the population mean is greater than some number. On the other hand, if I am dealing with a left tail test, it should be that the population mean is going to be greater than or equal to some number. And my alternate would be the population mean is going to be less than some number. When I'm dealing with a two-tailed test, it would be the null is the population mean would be equal to some number. And the alternate is the population mean is no longer equal to that number. So now once we have our, we decided what right tail test and left tail test or two tail test we're doing, we now have to see, okay, is the population mean given or is the population standard deviation given or not? So for all of them, if sigma is given, sigma is either known or sigma is unknown. So if we have sigma to be known, then we are going to do use the or find the z stat. On the other hand, if sigma is unknown, we are going to find a t stat. Or we're going to use the t statistics. Same thing with our left tail test. You know, if on the one hand, if we have sigma known or my sigma is unknown. And same with our two-tailed test. We have sigma known and sigma unknown. And in all cases, you know, if the sigma is known, we will use, we'll find the z stat first. And if sigma is unknown, we will find the t stat. So now we have the formulas of z stat and t stat here, where z stat would be x bar minus mu. X bar is the sample mean given to us. And if the sigma is known, we are going to use the standard error in the bottom, which is sigma over the square root of n. n is the sample size. But if I have the t stat, if I don't know the uh, population standard deviation, I'm going to use the sample standard deviation, which is s bar over the square root of n.
You know, once I've found out my z values, what I will do now is convert the z values to t values. So if I'm doing a right tail test, my p value is going to be the following. So from here, I'll find the p value, which is equals to 1 minus norm.s.dist, the z stat that I just found out, comma, true. And on the other hand, if I'm finding the t stat instead, then my p value will be, so let me write it nicely. So if I'm doing a right tail test, it would be for the t stat, it should be 1 minus t.dist. I would write the t stat, which I just found out, and my degrees of freedom would be n minus 1, and it would be true. On the other hand, there is also another formula I could use, which is t.dist.rt, and I would write the t stat, comma, n minus 1, the number of observations, and then write true. Either one would find, I would use either this one or this one to find the p-value for the t stat. Now, for the left tail test, if I know the values, like let's say if I know the population standard deviation, I would use basically very similar values. Uh, so from this one, my p-value would be equals to norm dot s dot dist, the z stat, comma, true. The same thing would be for the, if my, um, population standard deviation is unknown. The p-value that I find would be t dot dist. Then I would write the t stat, comma the n minus one, which is my degrees of freedom, and write true. Now, lastly, if I have my two-tail test, now there are a slightly different two different formulas that I may have to use. So what I'm going to do is, let me move this down here to here. If the z value I find is greater than zero, which means that the z value is higher, then I can use basically one minus norm dot s dot dist, the z stat comma true times two. So basically what I will do, the reason why I'm doing this is if z stat is greater than zero, you know, for a two-tail distribution, if this is the z value that I have, the rejection will be in both left and right. So I need to find the other z, the negative z here, and then I need to find the area of these two regions. So when I'm doing 1 minus norm dot s dot dist, I'm actually finding this region, which is shaded in red. And then I'm just multiplying that by 2. So however, if z is less than 0, now if we have z is to be less than 0, then we don't need to do this 1 minus thing anymore. What we can do is just pretty much write the same formula. But instead of the 1 in front of it, we just calculate this value. Same thing when sigma is unknown and I have two different t stats. So I'm going to write p value here. Same thing here with p values. If z is, or not z here, if t is greater than 0, then I would do 1 minus t dot dist t stat comma n minus 1 comma true and then times 2 or I could also do the same thing um, with the right tail test I would just find 1 minus t dot dist dot rt the t stat comma n, n minus 1 comma true, true times 2 so I could try either or now, if my t value is less than zero, I would use the regular formula equals to t dot dist, the t stat, 
comma n minus 1 comma true and the whole thing times two. so hopefully this was helpful this shows you the whole change how to find everything up to here now i'm going to find for all of them once i find the p value if p value is greater than alpha and the alpha will be given in the question usually it is either 0.1 or 0.05 or 0.001 so if the p-value I calculated is greater than the alpha then we do not reject the null but if if the p-value I found is going to be less than alpha then we reject the null so for after finding up to here we then go and calculate our or after we find the p-value we then compare it with the alpha and then if the alpha is greater than the p-value we then basically reject the null if the p-value is greater than alpha or the alpha is less than the p-value we do not reject the null hopefully this was helpful and i will see you at a later video have a good day goodbye